Okay, welcome to social studies session. My name is Walter Onyango, Alan Sarusuna Nursery and Primary School. Today, I want us to learn about map reading and map interpretation. In a social studies paper, for those who are preparing for KCP this year, you'll find that there are seven questions that you are supposed to answer from a map that you'll be provided with at uh, on the second page of the paper, social studies paper. So, uh, what is a map? In class five, we define a map as a representation of the earth or a portion of the earth on a flat surface. Uh, for a map to be called a good map, there are elements that makes a map to be called a good map. So the first element of a good map is the key. We have the key, scale, compass direction, title, and frame. The key explains the meanings of the symbols used on the map. This is where we are going to have all the meanings of the symbols used on the, uh, the, the symbols used on the map you are dealing with or the map you are studying. Then we have the scale for that map to fit on that flat surface where it is drawn, it has been reduced to a certain scale and therefore this is what is going to show us the relationship between the real length on the ground and the drawing length. Compass direction, this is the tool that we use to tell the direction of a place in the map. Then we have the title. Title is simply the name of the map you are studying. Then the frame, the frame encloses the map. It gives the boundary of the map you are studying. Now, what are the areas tested in map map work we have a number of areas that are tested in the map the first area that we are going to look at normally in a social studies paper number one number one is always testing on the direction number one is always testing on the direction so that map will be given you are going to be asked the direction of a particular place in reference to another place. For example, you can be asked the direction, for example, the direction of a church, the church from the school. So this is the school, and then this is the church. When, what are we going to, which tool are we going to use to tell the direction? So just as I said here, for us to tell the direction of the church from the school, we are going to use a tool that is the compass direction. And before that, there are keywords that we check before we tell the direction of a place. That is the word from and to, two or two words, from and to. Very important. Those are very important words that we must put into consideration when telling the direction of a place. Like, for example, in our case here, you are asked the direction of the church from, the word is from, from the school. So, where are we going to draw our campus direction to tell the direction of the church? Campus direction is drawn in, uh, at the place mentioned immediately after the word from. This is where we are going to draw our campus direction for us to get the direction of the place asked in question. Like now, here we are asked the direction of the church from the school. So it means this is where we are going to draw our campus direction. And a campus direction has got four 
cardinal points. We have north, south, east, and west. So in our case, apart from the four main cardinal points, we also have other points of a compass direction. In our case, this is what we are going to have. So the direction of this church is between west and south. That is, the direction of the church from the school is southwest. When giving the direction of a place, the first point that we use must be uh, must come from the four main cardinal points. We cannot say the direction of the church is west-south. No, we start from south, it is from the south, uh, between south and west, so it is south-west. Now, apart from direction, another thing that is tested in a map work is economic activities. Sorry. Economic activities, things that people do to earn a living or to create wealth. Economic activities. What are some of the economic activities that people do? We have farming, mining, trading, transportation, and the rest. So, here, on the map you are dealing with, or on the map you are studying, you are going to find some symbols representing different economic activities done on the, on that, in that area you are studying. Now, for example, you can have a symbol like this. This symbol, when you go to the key, you will get what it means. So we shall have the symbol, meaning, and interpretation. Symbol, meaning, and interpretation. So this symbol, when you go to the key, depending on the map you are dealing with, you will realize that this symbol, when you go to the key, the key is telling us this symbol is quarry, qu a quarry. It shows a quarry, and when we see a quarry on the map, that means that the, there is an economic activity going on, that is mining. The economic activity that is taking place in this area is mining. So a quarry tells us that there is mining, that is one of the economic activities. Then another one, another symbol that you may get is that capital T, T, then this capital T, T, when you go to the key, they tell you that they represent T. So when we see T, what does it mean? It means that there is crop farming in this area. These people grow some crops. So there is tea farming or crop farming. They are crop farmers. They grow some crops. They can also use other symbols to represent other crops to show crop farming. For example, capital C, C to show t uh, coffee, meaning there is coffee, coffee farming going on here. Apart from T, we, also, uh, we may also have this symbol, a triangle, and when you go to the key, the symbol, they will explain that this symbol shows the, uh, that uh, uh, it is a sawmill, and when we see a sawmill, the economic activity that is going on there is lumbering. Lumbering means cutting down of trees for timber, logging for timber, timber that we use for making furnitures, chairs, tables, wood. Uh, 
Another economic activity symbol used is C D. Then when you go to the key, they tell you that that is a cattle dip. And when we see a cattle dip, what comes into our mind? There is livestock keeping or cattle keeping. So there is livestock, livestock keeping. It means that these people, they keep some animals. They keep some animals. There is cut, uh, they keep some animals or they are pastoralists. Then uh, the presence of a, a road, road, we can have a tarmac road or both tarmac road and maram road. So road, it can be road, railway, or any water transport. So this shows that there is transportation. Trans transportation. It can be road, airstrip, railway line, or any other means of transport to show that there is transportation. Um, among others that you may find on the map. So in short, what I'm saying is this. Before you rush to answering of the questions, you are supposed to take your time, check all the symbols used on the map, and get their meanings from the, from the key. Number three, the third thing that you are likely to be tested on is the climate. The climate of a certain part of that map or that area you are studying or the climate of the whole area you are studying. So, the first one is cool and wet. How will we tell that a place is cool and wet? So the first one, cool and wet climate. Cool and wet climate. Cool and wet climate means that area receives high rainfall and the temperatures are low. High rainfall and low temperatures brings us to a cool and wet climate. Now, what, are, what evidence or what are some of the things that when we see on the map, will show us that that area or that part of the area we are dealing with is cool and wet. Number one, when we see a thick forest, that is under vegetation, a thick forest. Always forests are water catchment areas, so it means that area receives high rainfall. So a thick forest will tell us that that area is cool and wet. Apart from vegetation, we can also tell the climate of an area by looking at the crops growing. So the crops grown. For example, a crop that is grown, some crops that are grown in a cool and wet areas are crops like tea, coffee. When we see these crops, we know that that area where they are grown is cool and wet. Apart from crops growing, we can also have dairy farming. Dairy farming is mostly done in highland areas, and we know very well that highland areas experience cool and wet climate. So these are some of the things that when we see on the map, we can tell that that part of the map we are dealing with is cool and wet. Number two is hot and dry. Hot and dry. So just like we have said here in number one, the vegetation can also lead us to get, uh, to tell that this place is hot and dry or not hot and dry. So there are some vegetation that are found in arid areas. Arid areas are the dry areas we are talking about. 
So, which are some of the crop, uh, which are some of the vegetation that are found in hot and dry areas? We have shrubs, acacia trees. Acacia trees and shrubs grows in a hot and dry area or arid areas. Arid areas, I've said, these are dry areas. They receive very little rainfall or no rainfall. Most of the months goes without rainfall. Then the third one is hot and wet. Hot and wet climate. Hot and wet climate. So here again, there are some crops that will guide us uh, or will tell us that that area is hot and wet. A hot and wet climate means that that area, the temperatures are high and at the same time, the area receives high rainfall. So crops like cocoa, cocoa, sugarcane, Cocoa, sugarcane, maize, among others, grow in a hot and wet climate. Hot and wet climate. So we have talked about three uh, climates here. Cool and wet, hot and wet, and hot and dry. And I've said, before you rush to answer the questions, go to the key. Study everything in the map and go to the key. The next thing that you are likely to be tested on is, that is number four, is the relief. The relief and drainage features. When we talk of relief, we are talking about the nature of that land the nature of the land you are studying. Some areas are flat, some areas are hilly, some parts you can be given a, a map that is covering part of it is a highland, part of it is a, a, a lowland. So you are also likely to be tested on that. So here, uh, this is where you'll be asked a question like the highest point of the map, of the area you are dealing with. So for us to tell the highest point and the lowest point on the map, we are going, you, are, you will be given the altitudes of uh, different parts, on different parts I mean. So you'll be shown, for example, that this part is 800 meters. This is meters above the sea level and as uh, for example here at this point you'll be told that this part is 200 meters above the sea level so you find that they differ in altitude they differ in altitude when you are given these two when you are given the altitude you can easily tell the highest point of the area and the lowest point of that area you are dealing with then Again, here, this is where you'll be asked about the slope, the slope of the land. The slope, of, for example, they like asking a question like this. At the land, for example, the map you are studying is called Digo, Digo area, Digo area. Then you, are, you will be asked, Digo area slopes from Digo area slopes from, they have used the word slope, slopes, rises. I want to explain these two. Uh, this question is intertwined with the first part that we dealt with, that is direction. You are asked the direction, but you cannot tell the direction if you don't know the nature of the land, because here you are uh, it is talking about the nature of the land. You are asking, the, the, you are being asked the direction and at the same time it is connected to the nature of this land. Now, when you are asked about the slope of the land, check, 
First of all, identify the highest point of the map. When you are given the altitude, you will easily tell the highest point on that area. Or if you are not given the altitude, check the river flow. Check the river flow. Always, a river will begin on a, a, a highland area. The highland area, the rivers normally begin on the highland area. So how will we tell that this is the source of the river? You will, that is where you will have the forests and the tributaries of the river will also guide you tell the highest point of the, uh, tell you the, the, the source of that river, I mean. So using the river, you will easily, you, you, you will easily tell that this is where the river begins, so it is the highest point. A river flows from the highest point to a lowest point. So when you are asked the map of the, uh, the land in Digo area slopes from, slopes means it starts from the highest point to the lowest point. So when we are moving from the highest point to the lowest point, this land is sloping. So this is what we call slope. So you give the direction starting from the, ha the highest point to the lowest point, that is when you are asked about the slopes, the land slopes from, to rises. Rises is now the opposite. You are going the opposite direction. Something is rising, uh, should rise from a low, uh, the lowest area to the highest. So in this case, if you are given the altitude, well and good. If you are not given any uh, altitude, check the river flow. Check how the river flows. Normally, just, a, uh, just as I have said, a river flows from a highland area to a lowland area. So in this case, you will say that the lowest point should be where this river is draining to. So it will give you a direction in relation to what? where the river is draining its water. So rises should come from the lowest point to the highest point. So you'll check where that river is draining its water. That should be the lowest point. So your direction should start from where the river drains its water. I think that is well understood. Um, uh, the, the fifth part, that is now administration. Uh, this is where a number of pupils get confused and give a wrong answer. Administration under the devolved government, we now have county governments and most maps that we deal with mostly deal with counties. We, may say we mostly deal with the counties, counties or a sub-county. So under administration, here we are talking about the head of that area you are studying. So there are some things that will be shown in the map to tell you that this area is administered by so and so. For example, in the map, if we have, if we have a chief's camp, if we have a chief's camp, This shows us that this area is a location because a chief is in charge of a location. A chief is in charge of a location. So when we have a chief's camp on the map, we know that this area is under a chief. So the admini administrator here is going to be a chief. That is when we have a chief's camp. So the administrator here is a chief we can tell that this area is administered by a chief. Uh, another thing, we can have a location boundary. You can be given a location boundary. When we have a location boundary, this now means that this area is under more than one chief. There is more than one chief now because we have a location boundary. Each chief will be in charge of one location. The other one will be in charge of another 
location. So the whole of this area, the whole of this area will now be under the next administrator from the chief, that is the DO. It is now under the DO. Uh, governor's office, in the map they will use GO and then in the key you'll get the meaning governor's office. When we see a governor's office in the map, it tells you that that area is a county. And who is the head of a county? A county is headed by a governor. So I want you to take note here because pupils normally get a wrong answer here. When you are asked the head of an area and it is a county, the head of a county is a governor. When we are talking about the head, when we are talking about the head of a county, is a governor. But when you are asked about the chief administrator, the chief administrator, here we have county commissioner. County commissioner. We talk of county commissioner. Uh, the head of a county governor, when you are asked about the chief administrator, is the county commissioner. Then uh, we also have sublocation. Sublocation, the one in charge of a sublocation is assistant chief. Then the last one, that is, there is also another question that you are normally asked. You note this, not before. All the trading licenses, trading licenses are obtained from the county offices. County offices. Very many pupils take police station. There is a police station, so they go for a police station to be giving the trading licenses, which is very wrong. Trading licenses are supposed to be given from the county offices. Uh, for today, I wish that we stop there. We shall continue from there in our next, les uh, in our next lesson. I mean, otherwise, thank you so much for listening and uh, for watching. Feel welcomed. Until we meet again next time. Thank you.